So, one of the things I get consistently asked throughout all of space and time, or at least the history of my channel, is if I want to get into DC cosmology, or if I would like a really short uh, narration on the very long, vast history that DC has at its disposal, this comic book here, Justice League uh, Incarnate Number 4, is a very large part of that. Well, why exactly? Well, it, consider, uh, it consolidates a very large chunk of the cosmology, as well as just like the general history of DC in less than like half a comic book and that's incredibly hard to do uh, in the modern day with how much stuff they have. So let's today take some time and see exactly why I reference this comic so much and what exact goodies we find throughout all of this entire run. So hope you're excited Lanterns because I get a lot of questions about this. Let's dig into it. But before we continue any further, homies, be sure to smash uh, that like button down low. I'm trying to reach 8K. I'm incredibly close today, so I imagine by the time this video drops, I'll actually have that on lock. So, way to go, Theron Max Core. If so, if not, man, you guys are flopping. Also, consider becoming a channel member, too, because these are the guys who keep driving me to make content. They're the guys supporting me. It takes uh, costs less than a coffee a month, man. So if you really want to support the core and help decide future content, hey, those are the guys uh, who help do that. But outside of that, let's get into this quick run whenever it comes to uh, recapping the totality of, of DC's history. So first off, some pretext. There's this character called Dr. Multiverse, and Dr. Multiverse is a character who was chosen by basically the multiverse itself as a hero to help protect it against all sorts of problems, and they're aware of everything in the multiverse that has occurred. So this is a very primary uh, source of information that we're getting these things from, right? The multiverse itself is, is, is giving the vision for this woman. So anything she says is probably accurate. That's important to know because who's telling a story, especially throughout the complicated history of DC, um, we look at them. We look at them as retcons in the real world, but in the inverse world of DC, they're not retcons. They're just simply more information being gained. This should be some of the best information we could possibly get. Now, that being said, it's Doctor Multiverse who narrates things way back, even past the time of our multiverse, which is honestly pretty impressive. She goes way back to before our multiverse, before the Overvoid, before everything back when everything was uh, literally nothing, when everything um, and nothing were one and the same nonetheless. An infinite black uh, infinitude, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, the, inf the single black infinitude here is the great darkness, okay? We just didn't have a name for it at this point in time because there was no names for anything. Now, it was so cold and so dark for very long that even the birth of the light that came later on, like it was imperceptible to the, to the single black infinitude, the great darkness itself. Uh, because it was tiny, but as it grew, there was more of something, and thus there was less nothing, and the great darkness, or the single black infinitude, are just the nothingness that exists. They're like the concept of nothing before anything came. So if there is something, by definition, there's less nothing, and it feels weakened, and it screams as a result of that. Now, what we do know, moving past that point in time, is that that scream from the great darkness somehow creates an imperceptible flaw on the immaculate light that had appeared inside the darkness. Now the light here, uh, clearly being referenced on the page, is the Overvoid. And in fact, this scan here is almost a direct call out to, I believe, the uh, the final crisis iteration, or maybe it was mul the multiversity iteration of telling this origin story with the flaw specifically. And that kind of set, uh, sets up where our multiverse comes in. Because where this flaw is, where this flaw occurs, a multiverse in that instant is immediately born. To fill in the blanks here, the things that happen in between these moments, the multiverse being formed specifically after Krona had created everything, this starts the push and pull of the great darkness and whoever you think the light is, and it had battled back and forth because Krona had effectively unleashed evil back into the multiverse via having created uh, all the worlds that exist by, by creating essentially just hyper time inside our multiverse, because originally we only had one world. And this battle starts bubbling up throughout our entire cosmos. And as this battle culminates, where things are just the absolute worst they possibly could have, which reaches us to like the first major massive event inside of DC, which is the Crisis on Infinite Earths. Marnovu, one of many created by the light, 
um, through Perpetua within this context to monitor the multiverse in one of its fundamental aspects and the Anti-Monitor, one of many who are cursed by the Great Darkness to obliterate the, the multiverse. Both are facets of the light and the darkness does a lot of things to corrupt things throughout history. And as we see here, obviously it was the Anti-Monitor who was the first of which uh, who, who struck. And the Crisis on Infinite Earths event unto itself is a massive event. It's one of the biggest DC has ever had. If you ever get the chance, definitely check it out. It's one of the biggest cosmic events that have ever happened. And even here, they basically say that this was like arguably one of the worst events ever. Um, it rarely got worse than how it was with the, the Anti-Monitor because he deleted everything, every world in existence, basically returning us back to one, how we originally were. And that was, uh, I mean, that, that's huge, right? Very, it's not very often that DC removes things from uh, its cosmology, and this was one of the times where they clearly and definitively had. Now, during this event, the Monitor unfortunately gives his life to activate pretty much all of the heroes across the multiverse. He pulls them all together, and it's important that they they specify here that what he pulled together, the superheroes, they're basically the multiverse's immune system to threats against it. So basically the Monitor just summoned all the heroes, put them in the best places possible, and gave them the best possible tech to survive. And they managed to fight the threat of the Anti-Monitor at great cost, because as I said, everything was absolutely obliterated down to a single universe. Um, but they did manage to stop him. This act was so messed up, it actually weakened uh, the light, or like everything in existence. Everything that was, was weakened by how big of a loss this was from existence. In that moment of weakness, the great darkness, that thing that wanted to be nothing and wants everything to be nothing again, attacks reality. He's like, yo, they're weakened, they're down to a single world, all I have to do is fracture this, this multiverse and everything goes with it. So I'm going to attack. And he attacks and Swamp Thing, I want to say it's like 59 or 48, I think is when he first shows up. He jumps all of reality, kicks everyone's ass, and everything almost became nothing again. But Unfortunately, uh, he was talking to a bunch of the figures who showed up, and one of them was Swamp Thing. And Swamp Thing hits the Great Darkness with some military-grade, big-brain philosophy talk no jutsu. That's something that he had never heard of before. And he was like, yo, dude, you like think. That's crazy. Everyone else who showed up here was just kind of an asshole and said I was evil. That's rough, buddy. And then he lets Swamp Thing leaves. And as Swamp Thing leaves, he basically just gives the ultimate cosmic handshake of destiny uh, with the uh, with his right hand and the light itself. And as I said, you can debate on who the light is in your opinion. Some people believe it's just the Overvoid. Some people believe it's just the Presence. Some people believe it's just the Source. Some people believe it's a higher being from all three. It really just kind of depends on your personal interpretation of that. But either way, basically the two strongest beings in DC, however you look at it, do the ultimate cosmic handshake here and they decide that the light would no longer attempt to shine as brightly or, uh, uh, in other words, basically they would stop trying to continually create more worlds in the nothing so that the nothing stays the same and so the Great Darkness is in less pain. And the Great Darkness would chill the fuck out and stop trying to blow up everything ever. And so everybody thought this deal was pretty lit, right? Everybody's kind of getting what they want. Um, the Great Darkness doesn't suffer as much and uh, the cosmos itself, like everything that was represented by the light, they basically say, okay, we're gonna be less, uh, we're gonna be less creative, we're gonna create less worlds. And so, this shit was perfect, or so everybody thought. But when you're a shitter on the scale of the great darkness, even if you don't want something to happen intentionally, when you still sleep, it does. And when the Great Darkness went back to sleep, like Cosmo the Wish Wishmaster from Adventure Time, he dreamt of his success in destroying everything that was and returning everything to nothing. And so his influence is still uh, continued to exert itself upon creation, finding powerful figures across the cosmos like Magog, Extant, Superboy Prime, the Anti-Life Entity, or even the Hyperfly. Um, making them avatars and puppets of the great darkness inadvertently with them not even aware that that's what they were doing that they were being mind hexed by the great darkness but all of them wishing to destroy or weaken creation itself because of the great darkness's uh, deepest desire to return everything back to nothing once more 
So all of these different avatars that the Great Darkness Wall of Sleep had been mind hacking as they continue to attack creation. Those attacks ultimately culminate in something called Infinite Crisis, another major, major event uh, for DC, where the singular universe that had existed since Infinite Crisis was essentially turned into a multiverse once more. This led it to more of something. Which, keep in mind, that breaks the truce between the light and the great darkness at the same time. So, panicked, the light looks to the multiverse and dispatches more people to help contain things and limit the Ori, uh, this, uh, the Ori of Worlds to 52 in hopes of slowing the great darkness from waking up from its slumber. But, unfortunately, the deal was broken and the great darkness would wake again. But dark side, you know, that really stony-faced fucko, who's also a really big-brained fucko, was one of few in existence who knew about the Great Darkness, and had even been a pivotal help in helping deal with the Anti-Monitor during the Crisis on Infinite Earths. The god of all evil inside of existence, he understood truths about the Great Darkness nobody else did, that the truth of it all was the Great Darkness is not good nor evil life nor death or any concept whatsoever the great darkness is nothingness and just wishes everything to be nothingness uh, and e once more everything and nothing to just go back to the way things were way back in the day so dark side in his infinite wisdom creates his own i guess you could say final crisis nonetheless but that would be incorrect because there's more afterwards but we don't need to get into that Darkseid's final crisis here was designed to draw out the Great Darkness so that Darkseid could control everyone and everything that existed. But unfortunately, Darkseid just didn't count on one thing, and that was being killed. Yeah, being killed actually puts back your plans, so Darkseid kind of got uh, cosmically cock-blocked there. But as the multiverse was at its absolute weakest during Final Crisis, the heroes build uh, the Miracle Machine a device capable of granting any wish to the user, and in a moment of weakness for Superman is when the Great Darkness reveals itself inside the multiverse, in the form of Mandrak. Now, Mandrak had also arrived up in Nil, but that's a whole different thing. Um, obviously that was like outside of the universe, but we already kicked his ass, so let's, let's not even get there. But notice, it even says here, the first monitor and, uh, and corrupted by the dark. So the first monitor, especially out of any of those monitors, is literally Nyx, who was Mandrake. So like, even Mandrake wasn't uh, free from uh, the great darkness's corruption yeah, via this story. And although Mandrake showed up and was like super scary, he got his ass kicked in two separate different ways, which was absolutely hilarious. He was a loser who didn't actually kill anybody who mattered. And as Nyx Wotan, his son, called forth the multiverse's natural immune system to protect it, which keep in mind is uh, superheroes consistently throughout uh, the, the history of DC, they managed to actually put down uh, Mandrake. Why? Well, because naturally Mandrake takes L's, like he did in every encounter he had in this entire arc. And Superman makes his wish upon the miracle, the miracle machine, and it heals the entire multiverse. But, unfortunately, this made the Great Darkness realize who the true opposition and problem was here. They had spent so much time trying to deal with the cosmology itself, or uh, the, like, the major figures within the cosmology itself. But, the actual enemy to the Great Darkness itself wasn't the Light directly. It was actually the sub-agents of the Light, the superheroes, uh, the, uh, the natural immune system of the multiverse. Specifically, the heroes of Earth Zero, who always seem to be at the center of the multiverse, and contains all the prime versions of all the characters. All the versions uh, of uh, all the figures in DC outside of Earth Zero emanate out from, specifically, Earth Zero. So, he saw Earth Zero as an incredibly important place throughout the cosmology of all of DC, and so thinking, well, if those are the idiots who always stop me, well, if that's the case, let me hook up uh, some real meme shit. So he looks across the cosmos to look for somebody super fucked up to fight these Earth Zero characters, and then he curses the quantum being Dr. Manhattan to go uh, to that universe with intent of stealing time from their universe and the entire multiverse as a result because a lot of the other iterations of characters come from specifically Earth Zero and um, and also just destroy everything right he was on a task to actually blow up everything and did 
But as all, while all that was going on, and as they solved that, or actually not as they solved that, as that's going on, the right hand of the great darkness, the one that shook that hand of light, remember that bad boy way back when? It actually falls off and becomes something new entirely, something known as the empty hand, okay? And the empty hand is a wildly dangerous figure. It's basically just like the metaphorical right hand of the great darkness, and it starts to grow a powerful army of things called the gentry from the carcass of the old multiverse. Um, keep in mind, the multiverse that was destroyed in Crisis on Infinite Earths, the very first Crisis event, that multiverse's body, basically, or its carcass, fell into the great darkness, and they just made an army out of the, the, the everything that it was left there. How messed up is that? But he basically arrives inside the multiverse and decides to test the uh, multiverse's natural immune system again, but this time, not Earth Zero. They're targeting it on a different front. They decide to test the multiverse's heroes across everything, not just Earth Zero. And Nixuotan, the super judge, the last of the monitors in the, in the current iteration of things, faces off against the gentry and the empty hand, but unfortunately, he was corrupted and just joined their, like, evil crew of fuckos. Joined being a minion of the Great Darkness, essentially. So whether you're a monitor, whether you're a corrupted monitor, whether you're the anti-monitor, doesn't matter. The Great Darkness is gonna mind, actually. But much like the uh, monitor before him, he had already sent out an SOS to all the heroes of the multiverse who then formed the Justice League Incarnate to help fight back against threats to the entire multiverse. But unfortunately, Nyx was a shitter just like his dad and the rest of the monitors and goes full potato after getting mind hexed and releases Darkseid from his death. Even Nyx confirms that he serves the Great Darkness, and the Great Darkness encompasses us all. And that's quite literally here, because the Great Darkness is just the nothingness outside of everything that exists. But Darkseid didn't really have uh, care for anything going on here. He kind of had his own plans going on in the background. He needed to reassemble his godhead after getting absolutely nuked. And after quite an insane battle, the heroes of the multiverse actually managed to defeat the forces of the gentry and quarantine empty hand to only Earth-7. They still labor to create some sort of nightmare technology called an Oblivion Machine. The Oblivion Machine's interest is to undo the wish upon the Miracle Machine that Superman made back during Final Crisis. So they're laboring to do some pretty whack shit. However, despite the Great Darkness attacking on all these fronts, and sometimes even inadvertently, the Great Darkness then turns its attention back to Earth Zero, because in the meantime, all sorts of things started happening. Unfortunately, all his prior avatars had failed, even up to Dr. Manhattan, who somehow just had like an ultimate brain-gasm like Jimmy Neutron and just said, yo, I'm just gonna fade into existence, don't question it. So, he looked to new figures, and that's when he started making the Metal Wars happen. Both the events of Metal and uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal occur during this specific point in time, and it's pointed out that the demon Barbados, you know, basically the child of the World Forger, was also an agent of the Great Darkness as well, and he almost succeeded into uh, pulling Earth Zero into the Dark Multiverse, destroying everything in the multiverse in the process. But the heroes did manage to barely beat out that av avatar. However, from one of his minions came the biggest frustration, the biggest nightmare, in all honesty, for everyone in the multiverse. During uh, like the, the events of Death Metal, it was the Bat Who Laughs, a being from the Dark Multiverse, who fundamentally changes the multiverse forever, despite de being defeated himself. And this distorts the multiverse in ways that we had never seen before. Earth Zero was no longer the center of the multiverse, and there were new worlds that were appearing and popping up we had never seen before. Even some just being fragments of the Great Darkness itself um, that were just floating around in the Ori, or at least inside the multiverse at a variety of different times. And post that, Darkseid even manages to kill the rest of the Quintessence and uh, reassemble his godhood or his godhead, seize control of Earth Omega, which was one of those fragments of the Great Darkness, and recontinuing his plan to control everything in existence and outside of existence, he wishes to utilize the, the powers of people both in the cosmos and out of the cosmos to control everything everywhere, because that's just Dark Knight's, uh, that's just Darkseid's foundational goal. So, 
that's kind of where we were at during the end of uh, when this story specifically came out in Justice League Incarnate number four. Obviously, we continue things on. We have Dark Crisis past this moment in time. Um, if you want to read up, feel free to go and, and read that bad boy. It's super interesting, but I don't think it's as uh, relevant as like covering everything that we had here because as wild as it is, we basically cover, I mean, every major crisis event that occurs. Zero Hours kind of looked... Uh, it kind of overlooked within this story, I guess to a certain extent. But outside of that, every foundational moment I think is kind of covered and it gives you a lot of really good shout outs to important moments and historical uh, historical concepts as well as like cosmological concepts throughout things. So hopefully you guys enjoyed just like my general recap of this because this was one of those things where if I was to like, if somebody was like, hey, like give me a timeline um, that's believable that just kind of wraps everything up, and I want to read the modern day stuff. Yeah, this is probably what I would point them towards. Uh, this is a pretty goaded comic and big shout outs to everybody who wrote this bad boy. But I've got a few other uh, videos I'm working on for y'all. So hopefully you guys are excited for this bad boy and those coming down the way. Don't forget to like and subscribe down low if you guys want to see some more historical stuff or maybe see some more timelines and things along those lines. And if you enjoyed this, I have a much bigger version of this um i mean a 43 minutes or 50 minute version of dc's timeline feel free to check that out i'll try to get that in maybe that corner who knows somewhere and uh, yeah definitely check that out because it's got a lot more information and i'm sure you'll enjoy if you're enjoying this timeline but no further ado we'll catch you next time lanterns later You'll join my list of dead after I tear you in half And I laughed at the thought of them controlling me I'm the ultimate dragon that's fought ever in thee I resist in the fight